Berlin Tempelhof Airport was one of the airports in Berlin, Germany. Situated in the south central Berlin borough of Tempelhof Schaparagraf Neberg, the airport ceased operating in 2008 while establishing Berlin Brandenburg Airport as the sole commercial airport for Berlin. Tempelhof was designated as an airport by the Ministry of Transport on October 8, 1923. The old terminal was originally constructed in 1927. In anticipation of increasing air traffic, the Nazi government began a massive reconstruction in the mid 1930s. While it was occasionally cited as the world's oldest operating commercial airport, the title was disputed by several other airports, and is no longer an issue since its closure. Tempelhof was one of Europe's three iconic pre World War II airports, the others being London's now defunct Croydon Airport and the old Paris Euro Le Budget Airport. One of the airport's most distinctive features is its large, canopy style roof, which was able to accommodate most contemporary airliners during its heyday in the 1950s, 1960s, and early 1970s, protecting passengers from the elements. Tempelhof Airport's main building was once among the top 20 largest buildings on Earth. In contrast, it formerly had the world's smallest duty free shop. Tempelhof Airport closed all operations on October 30, 2008, despite the efforts of some protesters to prevent the closure. A non binding referendum was held on April 27, 2008, against the impending closure but failed due to low voter turnout. Overview Tempelhof was often called the city airport. In its later years, it mostly had commuter flights to other parts of Germany and neighboring countries. But it had in the past received long haul, wide bodied airliners, such as the Boeing 747, the Lockheed L 1011 Tristar, and the Lockheed C 5A Galaxy. The first of the former three first appeared at Tempelhof on September 18, 1976, when Pan American World Airways flew in Boeing 747 SP Clipper Great Republic to participate in the static exhibition of contemporary military non-combat and civil aircraft at the annual day of open house of the United States Air Force at the airport. The latter had its first appearance at Tempelhof on September 17, 1971, when an aircraft of the USAF's 436th Military Airlift Wing flew in from Dover Air Force Base in Delaware, United States, to participate in that year's day of open house static exhibition. These events respectively marked the debut at Tempelhof of the largest aircraft in commercial airline service at the time and the then largest aircraft overall. It had two parallel runways. Runway 9L-27R was 2,094 meters long and runway 9R-27L was 1,840 m. Both were paved with asphalt. The taxiway was in the shape of an oval around these two runways with a single terminal on the north side of the airport. Other possible uses for Tempelhof are being discussed, and many people are trying to keep the airport buildings preserved. History The site of the airport was originally Knights Templar land in medieval Berlin, and from this beginning came the name Tempelhof. Later, the site was used as a parade field by Prussian forces, and by unified German forces from 1720 to the start of World War I. In 1909, Frenchman Armand Zipfel made the first flight demonstration in Tempelhof, followed by Orville Wright later that same year. Tempelhof was first officially designated as an airport on October 8, 1923. Deutsche Lufthansa was founded in Tempelhof on January 6, 1926. The old terminal, originally constructed in 1927, became the world's first with an underground railway. The station has since been renamed Paradestrano, because the rebuilding of the airport in the 1930s required the airport access to be moved to a major intersection with a station now called Platz der Luftbrücke one quarter CKE after the Berlin airlift. As part of Albert Speer's plan for the reconstruction of Berlin during the Nazi era, Professor Ernst Sergebiel was ordered to replace the old terminal with a new terminal building in 1934. The airport halls and the adjoining buildings, intended to become the gateway to Europe and a symbol of Hitler's world capital Germania, are still known as one of the largest built entities worldwide, and have been described by British architect Sir Norman Foster as the mother of all airports. With its four-section adders of shell limestone, the terminal building, 
built between 1936 and 1941, forms a 1.2-kilometer-long quadrant. Arriving passengers walk through customs controls to the reception hall. Tempelhof was served by the U6 U-Bahn line along Muringdom and up Friedrichstrahl. Central Flughafen and Tempelhof Berlin had the advantage of a central location just minutes from the Berlin city center and quickly became one of the world's busiest airports. Tempelhof saw its greatest pre-war days during 1938 to Euro 1939, when up to 52 foreign and 40 domestic flights arrived and departed daily from the old terminal while the new one was still under construction. The new air terminal was designed as headquarters for Deutsche Lufthansa, the German national airline at that time. As a forerunner of today's modern airports, the building was designed with many unique features, including giant arc-shaped aircraft hangars. Although under construction for more than 10 years, it was never finished because of World War II. For passengers and freight, the 1927 built terminal stayed in use until April 24, 1945. The building complex was designed to resemble an eagle in flight with semicircular hangars forming the bird's spread wings. A one army long hangar roof was to have been laid in tiers to form a stadium for spectators at air and ground demonstrations. World War II Fearing Allied bombing of airports, all German civil aviation was halted on September 2, 1939, but gradually restarted from November 1. However, the 1927 built terminal remained closed to all civil aviation, and all Berlin bound slash originating civilian aircraft movements transferred to an airfield in Rangsdorf until March 7, 1940, when the 1927 terminal was reopened and civil aviation continued until April 24, 1945. From January 1940 until early 1944, Riese Flugzeugbau assembled Junkers Ju 87 Stuka dive bombers. Thereafter, it assembled Focke-Wulf FW-190 fighter planes in the still unfurnished main hall and hangars 3 to 7 of the new terminal, which were supplied by a railway and trucks via a connecting tunnel. Hangars 1 and 2 were not used to assemble aircraft as these were already used by Lufthansa for its own planes. Aircraft parts were brought in from all over the city while complete aircraft engines were trucked to Tempelhof. Once the airframes were complete and the engines had been installed, the finished aircraft were flown out. The Luftwaffe did not use Tempelhof as a military airfield during World War II, except for occasional emergency landings by fighter aircraft. On April 21, 1945, Deutsche Lufthansa operated its last scheduled flights, and over the coming days laid on additional non-scheduled flights from Johannesthal Airfield which stopped over at Tempelhof to take on freight en route to Travema one quarter NDE in Munich, where Lufthansa had relocated its headquarters. Two days later, on April 23, the airline's last ever flight to depart Tempelhof left for Madrid, but was later shot down over southern Germany. Tempelhof's German commander, Oberst Rudolf Bar Paragraph TTGR, refused to carry out orders to blow up the base, choosing instead to kill himself. Soviet forces took Tempelhof in the Battle of Berlin on 28 and 29 April 1945 in the closing days of the war in Europe. Soviet forces combed through the old and the new terminal searching for treasures, hidden places and documents, opening all rooms. During their search, they blew up the fortified entrance to a three-level bomb shelter for celluloid films of the Hansa Luftwaffe GmbH, a Lufthansa subsidiary specializing in aerial photography. The explosion immediately ignited the celluloid, turning the film shelter under the northern office wing of the new terminal into a furnace and making it impossible to enter for several weeks. The raging inferno led the Soviet commander to order the lower levels to be flooded with water. With no functioning water supply and war-torn Berlin, this was only possible because the new terminal, which had suffered only slight war damage, had its own electricity and groundwater utility with underground reservoirs under the northerly forecourt of the new terminal close to the film shelter. On May 8, 1945, Western Allied and German signatories of the German surrender in Berlin and their entourage landed at Tempelhof Airport. At the beginning of May, Riese Flugzeugbau opened a workshop in Hangar 7 to repair streetcars. In the following weeks, 
Berliners raided all unguarded parts of the opened building searching for food or anything else useful and bartering in the black market. In accordance with the Yalta agreements, Central Flughafen and Berlin Tempelhof was turned over to the United States Army 2nd Armored Division on July 2, 1945 by the Soviet Union as part of the American occupation sector of Berlin. This agreement was later formalized by the August 1945 Potsdam Agreement, which formally divided Berlin into four occupation sectors. The 852nd Engineer Aviation Battalion arrived at Tempelhof on July 10, 1945 and conducted the original repairs in the new terminal. After the Allied Control Council had agreed upon West Berlin Air Corridors under control of the Berlin Air Safety Center, these opened in February 1946, enabling civil aviation at Tempelhof to restart. Berlin Airlift On June 20, 1948, Soviet authorities, claiming technical difficulties, halted all traffic by land and by water into or out of the western controlled sectors of Berlin. The only remaining access routes into the city were 320 ME wide air corridors across the Soviet zone of occupation. Faced with the choice of abandoning the city or attempting to supply its inhabitants with the necessities of life by air, the Western powers chose the latter course, and for the next 11 months sustained the city's two or one half million residents in one of the greatest feats in aviation history. Operation Vitals, as the airlift was unofficially named, began on June 26 when USAF Douglas C-47 Sky trains carried 80 tons of food into Tempelhof far less than the estimated 4,500 tons of food, coal and other essential supplies needed daily to maintain a minimum level of existence. But this force was soon augmented by United States Navy and Royal Air Force cargo aircraft, as well as British European Airways and many of Britain's fledgling wholly privately owned, independent airlines. The latter included the late Sir Freddie Lakers Air Charter, Eagle Aviation and Skyways. On October 15, 1948, to promote increased safety and cooperation between the separate U.S. and British airlift efforts, the Allies created a unified command a Euro the Combined Airlift Task Force under Major General William H. Tumner, USAF, was established at Tempelhof. To facilitate the command and control, as well as the unloading of aircraft, the USAF 53rd Troop Carrier Squadron was temporarily assigned to Tempelhof. The grass runways usual in Germany until then could not cope with a massive demand, and a subsequently built runway containing perforated steel matting began to crumble under the weight of the USAF C-54 Skymasters. Hence, American engineers built a new 6000 EFT runway at Tempelhof between July and September 1948 and another between September and October 1948 to accommodate the expanding requirements of the airlift. The old airport terminal of 1927 was demolished in 1948 in order to create additional space for unloading more planes. The last airlift transport touched down at Tempelhof on September 30, 1949. Tempelhof also became famous as the location of Operation Little Vittles, the dropping of candy to children living near the airport. The original candy bomber, Gail Harlewson noticed children lingering near the fence line of the airport and wanted to share something with them. He eventually started dropping candy by parachute just before landing. His efforts were expanded by other pilots and eventually became a part of legend in the city of Berlin. Cold War As the Cold War intensified in the late 1950s and 1960s, access problems to West Berlin, both by land and air, continued to cause tension. Throughout the Cold War years, Tempelhof was the main terminal for American military transport aircraft accessing West Berlin. In 1969 one of the pilots during the Berlin airlift, and the original candy bomber, Gail Harlewson, returned to Berlin as the commander of Tempelhof Air Base. With the fall of the Berlin Wall and the reunification of Germany, the presence of American forces in Berlin ended. The USAF 7350th Air Base Group at Tempelhof was deactivated in June 1993. In July 1994, with President Clinton in attendance, the British, French, and American Air and Land Forces in Berlin were deactivated in a ceremony on the Foring Parade Field at Tempelhof. The Western Allies returned the United City of Berlin to the unified German government. 
The U.S. Army closed its Berlin Army Aviation Detachment at TCA in August 1994, ending a 49-year American military presence in Berlin. Postwar commercial use American Overseas Airlines, at the time the Overseas Division of American Airlines, inaugurated the first commercial air link serving Tempelhof after the war with a flight from New York via Shannon, Amsterdam and Frankfurt on May 18, 1946. This was followed by AOA's inauguration of West Berlin's first dedicated domestic air link between Tempelhof and Frankfurt's Rhein-Main Airport on March 1, 1948. AOA was the only commercial operator at Tempelhof to maintain its full flying program for the entire duration of the Berlin blockade. Following the end of the Berlin blockade, AOA launched additional dedicated scheduled services linking Tempelhof with Hamburg Fuels for one quarter TTE L and R one quarter Seldorf Lahorsen from March 6 and June 1, 1950 respectively. On September 25, 1950, Pan Am acquired AOA from American Airlines. This merger resulted in Pan Am establishing a growing presence at Tempelhof. Pan Am's initial equipment for its new Berlin operation were unpressurized, 60-seat Douglas DC-4s, widely available at the time due to the large number of war surplus C-54 Skymasters, 1950 was also the year Air France joined Pan Am at Tempelhof. Air France resumed operations to Tempelhof following their cessation during the war years. This was furthermore the time allied restrictions on the carriage of local civilians on commercial airline services from to West Berlin were lifted. It entailed transferring responsibility for processing all commercial flights to West Berlin city government, including the operation and maintenance of associated passenger, cargo and mail handling facilities. These changes gave a major boost to West Berlin's fledgling post-war scheduled air services. On July 8, 1951, BEA transferred its operations from Gatto to Tempelhof, thus concentrating all West Berlin air services at Berlin's iconic city center airport. BEA's move to Tempelhof resulted in a significant increase in passenger numbers, as well as an increase in its Berlin-based fleet to six Douglas DC-3s. From then on, several of the new, Wholly privately owned UK independent airlines and US supplemental carriers started regular air services to Tempelhof from the UK, the US and West Germany. These airlines initially carried members of the UK and US armed forces stationed in Berlin and their dependents as well as essential raw materials, finished goods manufactured in West Berlin and refugees from East Germany and Eastern Europe, who were still able to freely enter the city prior to the construction of the infamous Berlin Wall. This operation was also known as the Little Berlin Airlift. One of these airlines, UK independent Dan Air Services would subsequently play an important role in developing commercial air services from Tegel for a quarter century. During the early to mid-1950s, BEA leased an aircraft that were bigger than its Tempelhof-based fleet of DC-3 slash Pioneer, Viking and Elizabethan piston-engined airliners from other operators to boost capacity, following a steady increase in the airline's passenger loads. By 1954, a year that saw 671,555 passengers pass through the airport, Tempelhof had established itself as the third busiest airport in Europe. From June 6 of that year, Pan Am began re-equipping its Tempelhof-based fleet with larger, pressurized Douglas DC-6B prop liners. Compared with the DC-4, the new type had 16 additional seats. In 1958, BEA began replacing its piston airliners with Vickers Viscount 701 turboprop aircraft, in a high-density 63-seat single-class seating arrangement. Up to 10 new, state-of-the-art Vickers Viscount 802s, which featured a more spacious 66-seat single-class seating arrangement, soon replaced the older Series 701 aircraft. The greater range and higher cruising speed of the 802 series enabled BEA to inaugurate a non-stop London Heathrow a Euro Berlin Tempelhof service on November 1, 1965. This was the only non-stop international scheduled air service from Tempelhof. On November 19, 1959, a Pan Am DC-4 became the first aircraft to operate a scheduled all-cargo service from West Berlin. This service linked Tempelhof with Rhein-Main Airport once nightly all year round. 
On January 2, 1960, Air France, which had served Dar 1 Quarter Seldorf, Frankfurt, Munich, Nuremberg and its main base at Paris La Budget Orly during the previous decade with DC-4, Saldis Languedoc and Lockheed Constellation Super Constellation piston engine equipment, shifted its entire Berlin operation to Tegel because Tempelhof's runways were too short to permit the introduction of the Saud Aviation Caravel, their new short-haul jet, with a viable payload. On March 1, 1960, Pan Am launched its second dedicated scheduled all-cargo flight from Berlin, linking Tempelhof with Hamburg Fuels per one-quarter TTEL. 1960 was also the year Pan Am withdrew its last DC-4 from Tempelhof. As a result, all of the airline's Berlin routes were exclusively served with DC 6B as of June 27 of that year. Although the DC 6B was a less advanced aircraft than either the Viscount or the Caravel, it was more economical. By the early 1960s, Pan Am had a fleet of 15 DC 6B stationed at its Temporal Health Base, which were configured in a higher density seating arrangement than competing airlines' aircraft. This fleet eventually grew to 17 aircraft, which gave Pan Am the biggest aircraft fleet among the three main scheduled operators flying from West Berlin. It furthermore enabled it to compensate for the DC-6's lack of sophistication with higher frequencies than its competitors, thereby attaining a higher market share and capturing a greater share of the lucrative business travel market than its rivals. During that period, Pan Am moreover achieved an ultra-short haul load factor of 70% on its eighth scheduled internal routes from Berlin, making the airline's Berlin routes the most profitable in its worldwide scheduled network. Following the completion of the Berlin Wall on August 13, 1961, the West German government introduced a route-specific subsidy of up to 20% for all internal German scheduled air services from and to West Berlin to help the airlines cope with the resulting fall-off in traffic and maintain an economically viable operation on these lifeline routes. These came into effect on March 1, 1962 for all tickets sold in Germany, including Berlin. By the early 1960s, a number of UK independents and US supplementals began operating regular charter flights from Tempelhof. These carried both inbound tourists from the US, the UK and other countries as well as local outbound tourists to the emerging holiday resorts in the Mediterranean. London Gatwick-based UK independent overseas aviation was among the first airlines the Allied Air Attache Copyright S and Bond licensed to operate a series of regular charter flights from West Berlin. It used Vikings and Argonauts on these services, which operated from Temporal Health under contract to the Berlin Senate and the city's technical university as well as Berliner Flugring, a local package tour operator that began as a consortium of West Berlin travel agents arranging IT flights to holiday resorts in Europe. By 1964, BEA operated up to 20,000 flights each year from and to Berlin. These represented approximately half of the airline's total yearly flights to from Germany and generated profits of a £1 million per year. 1964 was also the year U.S. supplemental Saturn Airways began operating a comprehensive inclusive tour charter flight program from Temporal Health under contract to local package holiday company Flug Union Berlin, using Douglas DC-6 ACS and DC-7 CS. On December 2 of that year, a Boeing 727-100 became the first jet aircraft to land at Tempelhof. Boeing had leased the aircraft to Pan Am for a special flight from Frankfurt to Berlin to demonstrate to the airline the 727's ability to operate from Tempelhof's short runways. Pan Am indicated its intention to place an order for six 727s for its Berlin operation, as a result of the aircraft using only half the 5,900 EFT runway during landing. October 26, 1965 marked British Aircraft Corporation's new 111 jet's first arrival at Tempelhof when a British United 200 series operating a trooping flight under contract to the UK Ministry of Defence diverted from Gatto. January 22, 1966 marked the first appearance of a British trajet at Tempelhof when Hawker Siddeley flew in its HS-121 Trident 1E demonstrator aircraft for evaluation by BEA. A week later, on January 29, BEA began evaluating the BAC-111 suitability for its Berlin operations, 
with the start of a series of test flights conducted on its behalf by BAC's 475 series demonstrator. This included a number of takeoffs and landings at Tempelhof to test the aircraft's short field performance. On March 18, 1966, Pan Am became the first airline to commence regular, year-round jet operations from Tempelhof with the first examples of a brand new fleet of an initial eight Boeing 727-100 series, one of the first jet aircraft with a short field capability. These aircraft were configured in a single class featuring 128 economy seats. Pan Am's move put BEA at a considerable competitive disadvantage, especially on the busy Berliner Euro Frankfurt route where the former outcompeted the latter with both modern jet planes as well as a higher flight frequency. BEA responded to Pan Am's competitive threat by increasing the Berlin-based fleet to 13 Viscounts by winter 1966-7 to enable it to offer higher frequencies. This entailed reconfiguring aircraft cabins in a lower-density seating arrangement, as a result of which the refurbished cabins featured only 53, Comet-type first-class seats in a four-abreast layout instead of 66, five-abreast economy seats. In addition, BEA sought to differentiate itself from its main competitor by providing a superior in-flight catering standard battle. Henceforth, the airline marketed these services as Super Silver Star. The introduction of Pan Am 727s to the Berlin market represented a major step change because of the aircraft's ability to carry more passengers than any other contemporary aircraft type used by scheduled carriers in the short-haul Berlin market and its ability to take off from and land on Tempelhof's short runways with a full commercial payload as only light fuel loads were required on the short internal German services. Compared with PEA, Pan Am 727s carried 20% more passengers than the British carrier's Comet 4BS and up to two or one-half times as many passengers as the latter's Viscounts. Within two years of Pan Am's introduction of jet equipment on the bulk of its internal German services from to West Berlin, its market share rose from 58% to 68%. Despite the huge increase in capacity over the DC-6B, load factors dropped during the first year of operations only. The lower seat density in BEA's reconfigured Viscounts combined with higher flight frequencies, superior catering and increased promotion proved insufficient to counter the appeal of Pan Am's new jets, which were laid out in a comparatively tight, 34M pitch seating configuration. This resulted in BEA's market share declining from 38% at the beginning of this period to 27% at its end. On the other hand, BEA's reduced capacity in the domestic air travel market between West Berlin and West Germany enabled it to attain higher load factors than its competitors. From August 1968, BEA supplemented its Tempelhof-based Viscount fleet with de Havilland Comet 4B series jetliners. Although these aircraft could operate from Tempelhof's short runways without payload restrictions, they were not suited to the airline's ultra-short-haul operation from Berlin, given the high fuel consumption of the Comet, especially when operating at the mandatory 10,000 AFT altitude inside the Allied air corridors. This measure was therefore only a stopgap until most of BEA's Berlin fleet was equipped with 97-seat, single-class BAC-111 500s. BEA's re-equipment of its Berlin fleet with brand new 111-500 jets was central to the airline's competitive strategy to regain ground loss to Pan Am 727s. The new 111-500, which BEA called the Super 111, operated its first scheduled service from Berlin on September 1, 1968. It began replacing the airline's Berlin-based Viscounts from November 17, 1968. 1968 was also the year all non-scheduled services, that is primarily the rapidly growing number of inclusive tour charter flights, were concentrated at Tegel to alleviate increasing congestion at Tempelhof and to make better use of Tegel, which was underutilized at the time. Air France, West Berlin's third scheduled carrier, which had suffered a continuous traffic decline ever since the transfer of Berlin operations to more distant Tegel at the beginning of 1960 due to Tempelhof's operational limitations that made it unsuitable for its caravels, was worst affected by the equipment changes at the latter airport during the mid to late 1960s. Over this period, 
the French airline's market share halved from 9% to less than 5% despite having withdrawn from Tegela Euro da one quarter sold off in summer 1964 and concentrated its limited resources on Tegela Euro Frankfurt and Tegela Euro Munich to maximize the competitive impact on the latter two routes. To reverse growing losses on its Berlin routes resulting from load factors as low as 30%. Air France decided to withdraw from the internal German market entirely and instead enter into a joint venture with PEA. This arrangement entailed the latter taking over the former's two remaining German domestic routes to Frankfurt and Munich and operating these with its own aircraft and flight deck crews from Tempelhof. It also entailed repainting the fins of the BEA 111-500s in a neutral, dark blue scheme featuring Super 111 titles instead of BEA Speedjack motif. The Air France BEA joint venture became operational in spring 1969 and terminated in autumn 1972. Commercial air traffic from to Berlin Tempelhof peaked in 1971 at just above 5 or 1 half million passengers. This represented more than 90% of West Berlin's commercial air traffic and made its iconic city centre airport Germany's second largest. With 3 or 1 half million passengers, Panam accounted for the bulk of this traffic while almost all of the remaining 2 million accrued to BEA. 1971 was also the year the latter's last Berlin-based Viscount departed the city. East Germany's relaxation of border controls affecting all surface transport modes between West Berlin and West Germany across its territory from 1972 onwards resulted in a decline of scheduled internal German air traffic from to West Berlin. This was further compounded by the economic downturn in the wake of the 1973 oil crisis. The resulting fare increases that were intended to recover the airline's higher operating costs caused by steeply rising jet fuel prices led to a further drop in demand. This in turn resulted in a major contraction of Pan Am's and BEA's British Airways' internal German operations necessitating a reduction in both airlines' Berlin-based fleets and workforces in an attempt to contain growing losses these once profitable routes generated by the mid-1970s. On September 1, 1975, Pan Am and British Airways moved their entire Berlin operation to the newly built terminal at Tegel Airport. Following Pan Am's and British Airways' move to Tegel, commercial operations at Tempelhof ceased, resulting in exclusive use by the U.S. military. From 1978, Pan Am relocated its 727 flight deck crew training from Miami International Airport to Berlin Tempelhof. This involved, retraining all pilots and flight engineers who manned the flight decks of the airline's 727 fleet, which at the time operated out of Miami to the Caribbean and Central America, as well as on the IGS routes from Berlin and intra-European feeder routes serving Frankfurt and Heathrow. Commercial operations restarted in 1981, when U.S. incorporated regional airline startup Tempelhof Airways began a corporate shuttle between Tempelhof and Paderborn under contract to form a German computer manufacturer Nixdorf whose main factories and offices were located in Paderborn and West Berlin respectively. Tempelhof Airways' initial equipment comprised Cessna Conquest and Piper Navajo executive aircraft. In 1985, the airline converted the Tempella for Euro Paderborn corporate shuttle into a full-fledged scheduled service using a Nord 262 commuter turboprop. The end of the Cold War on German reunification opened Tempelhof for non-allied air traffic on October 3, 1990. U.S. President Bill Clinton christened a new Boeing C-17 Globemaster III transport plane the Spirit of Berlin at Tempelhof on May 12, 1998 to commemorate the 49th anniversary of the end of the Berlin blockade on May 12, 1949. Towards the end, commercial use was mostly in the form of small commuter aircraft flying regionally. Plans had been in place to shut down Tempelhof and Tegel, and make sure Paragraph and Feld the sole commercial airport for Berlin. Closing down air traffic. In 1996, the mayor of Berlin, Berard Diepchen, Brandenburg Minister President Manfred Stolp and the Federal Transport Minister Wisman established the so-called Euro OE Consensus Resolution Euro. The entire planning aimed at concentrating domestic and international air traffic in Berlin and Brandenburg at one airport, Berlin-Schaparagraf and Feld International Airport. 
to ensure investment protection as well as to fend off opposition to Shaparagraph and Feld International's expansion, it was mandated that first Tempelhof and then Tegel must be closed. On December 4, 2007, the Federal Administrative Court of Germany made the final decision as court of last instance to close Tempelhof Airport. Referendum against closing, an initiative for a known binding referendum against the closure was held and failed, after the initial number of signatures required were collected. According to the Constitution of the State of Berlin, the number of supportive signatures that were required to be collected within four months in order to compel a referendum amounts to 7% of the population of Berlin entitled to vote, 169,784. After the four-month period for the collection of signatures 203,408 signatures had been lodged. The referendum was held on April 27, 2008. All eligible voters received an information brochure along with their notification. A majority of the votes was necessary to support the referendum, but this had to be at least one quarter of all eligible Berlin voters. The initiative for keeping Tempelhof open was supported by the Interessentmienschaft City Airport Tempelhof along with a couple of opposition parties in the Berlin City Parliament, the Christian Democratic Union and the Free Democratic Party citing primarily the need for an inner city airport for business and private flyers as well as nostalgic reasons. Representatives from the ICAT suggested keeping the airport open up until Schaparagraf and Feld Airport was to be completed in about 2012. The Berlin government insisted on the closure of the airport for legal, long-term economic, and environmental reasons, in particular to ensure the expansion of Schaparagraph and Feld International. Environmental groups and the Green Party supported them in this. Plans for the future would include for example a Berlin airlift museum in the old terminal building, commercial space for innovative businesses, new housing and industrial areas, sports facilities, and parks. Legally the decision in favor of closure at the end of October 2008 was irrevocable and the referendum was known binding. A subsequent reopening would have faced high legal barriers. But some legal experts claim there may be means to circumvent this. The referendum of April 27, 2008 failed. Although 60.2% of the votes cast were for keeping the airport open, this was by only 21.7% of the eligible voters short of the 25% required. Support had been highest in western districts of Berlin, but opposition and disinterest was prevalent in the eastern districts. Voter turnout of 36% was low. Air traffic at Tempelhof Airport ceased for good on October 30 and the official license expired in mid-December. An A Euro OE goodbye Tempela for Euro Gala was held at Tempelhof Airport for 800 invited guests in the last hours of October 30. Meanwhile, protesters against the closing held a candle vigil in front on the Platz der LUFB RA one quarter CKE. The last commercial flight was a Cirrus Airlines Dornier 328 that departed at 22.17 towards Mannheim. A Euro OE time to say goodbye Euro was sung to the spectators on the tarmac at the conclusion. At precisely four and a half minutes before midnight. The last two airplanes a Euro a historical Junkers Ju-52 and an airlift a Euro a Raisin Bomber a Euro Douglas DC-3 a Euro took off in parallel, waved their wings, and flew off southeast to Schaparagraf and Feld Airport. The runway and airfield lights were switched off at midnight. Three Antonov and two airplanes flying under VFA were left stranded at the airport, as weather conditions prevented them from taking off on October 30. They were allowed to take off on November 24, 2008, making them the last aircraft to take off from the airport. Post-airport usage Tempelhof has been used since closing to host numerous fairs and events. The first major events included a fashion trade show in July and the Berlin Festival 2009 concert in August. Fairs are held in the hangar. In September 2010, Tempelhof hosted the Parkham. International World a Euro unregistered trademark s music and entertainment business meeting place and was one of the most important locations of the first Berlin Music Week. The place also hosts sports events. The Berlin Marathon Fair, the main event preparation to runners, is held at Tempelhof in September. 
the FIA Formula E Championship is scheduled to race at the apron. The Deutsche Turnwagen Masters executives are also discussing with government officials about hosting a round at Tempelhof. In August 2009, Berlin city officials announced that Tempelhof would be opened in May 2010 as a city park. The city will spend an estimated a 60 million on developing the park from 2010 to 2017. On the weekend of 8 May 9, 2010, the outfield was festively opened as Berlin's largest public park named Tempelhoferfeld. More than 200,000 Berliners visited the park to enjoy its wide open spaces for recreation ranging from biking and skating to baseball and kitting. The opening ceremonies were slightly marred by some protesters unhappy about the fence that closes off the park during the night. Entrance is free and park hours are from 6 a.m. until sunset. The grounds are maintained by Gra One Quarter in Berlin, a company that also looks after several other gated parks in Berlin. The Tempelhof fields will be used as a park indefinitely. This is manifested for instance by plans to host the 2017 IGA, Germania Euro Unregistered Trademark S World Horticultural Exhibition. There is a planned September 2013, kite energy demonstration at the Tempelhof field like some kite festivals there. About 80% of the former airfield was an important habitat for several reed-listed birds, plants and insects. Usage of the park is restricted to limit disturbance of some of these habitats. Airlines and destinations Most airlines moved to Tegel or Schaparagraf and felled in the years before Tempelhof closed down. This is a list of the airlines and destinations that operated out of Tempelhof in its last few years of existence. When it was actually closed down in 2008 there were only scheduled flights from Brussels Airlines and Cirrus Airlines still operating from there. Berlin Tempelhof also was an important base for air taxi services with the following operators flying from to there, AAF Avian Air, Air Service Berlin, Airship Air Service, Biz Air Flugzellschaft, Business Air Charter, Heli Union Air, Jet Club Deutschland Charter Management, Private Wings, Rotor Flug, TAG Aviation and Windrose Air. Accidents and Incidents, on April 29, 1952, an Air France Douglas C-54A operating a scheduled service from Frankfurt Rhin Main Airport to Berlin Tempelhof came under sustained attack from two Soviet MiG-15 fighters while passing through one of the Allied air corridors over East Germany. Although the attack had severely damaged the plane, necessitating the shutdown of engines number 3 and 4, the pilot in command of the aircraft managed to carry out a safe emergency landing at Tempelhof Airport. A subsequent inspection of the aircraft's damage at Tempelhof revealed that it had been hit by 89 shots fired from the Soviet MiGs during the preceding air attack. There were no fatalities among the 17 occupants despite the severity of the attack. The Soviet military authorities defended this attack on an unnamed civilian aircraft by claiming the Air France plane was outside the air corridor at the time of attack. On January 19, 1953, a Silver City Airways Bristol 170 freighter Mark 21 operating a non-scheduled cargo flight from West Berlin crash-landed near Tempelhof Airport as a result of fuel starvation when bad weather at the destination forced it to return to Berlin. Although the accident damaged the aircraft beyond repair, both pilots survived. In 1978, LOT Polish Airlines Flight 165 was hijacked and forced to land at Tempelhof. The U.S. military authorities who were in charge of Tempelhof during the Cold War era arrested the East German hijacker on arrival. Following the hijacker's arrest, the U.S. authorities returned the aircraft, its crew and those passengers who wished to resume their journey to Poland. In 1981, an LOT Polish Airlines Antenna AN-24 operating an internal scheduled service from Katowice to Gdor SK was hijacked en route and forced to land at Tempelhof. Bernard Pietka, the hijacker, was on military service while taking over the aircraft. He was armed with a grenade and a single-shot pistol. The U.S. military authorities arrested the hijacker on arrival and handed him over to the local police. At that time, he was expected to be sentenced to a five-year prison term under West German law. Following the hijacker's arrest, the U.S. authorities released the aircraft, its crew and all 50 passengers to resume their flight to Gdor SK. 
On June 26, 2010, a private Sakata TB-10 Tobago had to perform an emergency landing on the now-closed Tempelhof Airport due to engine failure. It was on a sightseeing flight and the pilot was looking for a free space to land safely. The aircraft was occupied by the pilot and three passengers and had taken off from Tegel Airport. Upon consultation with air traffic control in Schaparagrafenfeld, it was agreed to land on a Tempelhof runway. No one was injured during the emergency landing as the visitors of the now Tempelhofer Park scurried aside to make room for the TB-10, which came to a halt after a very short distance. Four days later, the Sakata TB-10 Tobago was transported a euro with wings removed a euro by lorry back to Tegel Airport. The Senate of Berlin now intends to prohibit sightseeing flights over Berlin by single-engine planes for safety reasons. It has been reported that the pilot had forgotten to switch over to the second fuel tank. See also, Nazi architecture, Berlin Brandenburg Airport, notes and citations, notes. Citations. References. Berlin Airport Company A Euro Monthly Timetable Booklet for Berlin Tempelhof and Berlin Tegel Airports, Several Issues, 1965 A Euro 1975. West Berlin, Germany. Berlin Airport Company A, German, Flight International. Sutton, UK, Read Business Information. Isna 15 er Simons, Graham M. The Spirit of Dun Air. Peterborough, UK, GMS Enterprises. ISBN A 1-870384-20-2 a Aircraft Illustrated Airport Profile A Euro Berlin Tempelhof. PP 28 to Euro 35, Volume 42, Number 1, January 2009. Hersham, UK, Ian Allen Publishing at ISSN 0002-2675, Schmitz, Frank. Flugar von Tempelhof, Berlin's Tour zur Welt. Berlin, B. Bra, 1997. ISBN 3-930863-32-4. Garby Dolph Bomaker Currency Impair, Berlin Tempelhof. In, Berlin Tempelhof, Liverpool Speak, Paris Le Budget. Anna Copyright is 30 Architecture des or Copyright Reports, Airport Architecture of the 30s, Flugafen Architekt und der Dreierige Jar. A Per Mildition's du Patrimoine, Paris 2000, ISBN 2 85822 9 PPA 32 a Euro 61. Bob Hawkins, Historic Airports. Proceedings of the International Le Europe de la Conferences on Aviation Architecture Liverpool, Berlin, Paris. English Heritage, London 2005, ISBN 1-873592-83-3. Hawkins, Bob. 1973. A multifaceted monument a Euro the complex heritage of Tempelhof Central Airport, Master of Arts thesis in World Heritage Studies, Brandenburg University of Technology Cottbus, 2007, further reading, external links, official website of the Tempelhof of Freiheit Park, local public transportation map, ICAT a Euro initiative for keeping Tempelhof open, official Berlin site for closing Tempelhof and future plans, BIFT a Euro initiative for Tempelhof's closure, Berlin Candy Bomber, History of the Airport Tempelhof A representation of the historical development from 1870 until this day. Pictures from a guided tour through the airport, National Museum of the USAF Berlin Airlift Factsheet, Ian Kleiner Verin der Psych mit den Fahrzeugen der Alliierten Bestschaftigt, der Zentral Flughafen von Tempelhof Feld zum Zentral Flughafen Berlin Tempelhof. An era ends with closing of Berlin Airport, Spiegel Online report of Christina Habel on NRC Handelsblad, picture archive from 1960, Bonjour Deutschland a Euro Luftverkehr und Nachbarn, 1926 a Euro 2006.